Canada's oil sands sector is entering a new phase of large-scale growth, one that many would not have predicted. And leading the charge is Canadian Natural Resources Limited, or CNRL, with one of the biggest multi-project investment announcements in more than a decade. In total, the company is preparing to deploy roughly $15 billion Canadian dollars across four major oil sands expansions that could collectively add 340,000 barrels per day of new bitumen production. Considering Canada currently produces about 5.5 million barrels per day, over 4 million of it exported, this would be a massive increase in Canadian heavy crude output especially since it's coming from only one of its oil producers. This is an important development, since such a large investment couldn't go forward if there wasn't a way to get it all to market, at a time when Canada is already close to maxing out their pipeline capacity. In this video, we'll break down the company behind the expansion, each new project, and the broader political and infrastructure landscape that is enabling this moment including signals from Ottawa that the emissions cap may never happen, the quiet optimism around the Northern Gateway 2.0 negotiations, and the increases in pipeline egress capacity coming from existing infrastructure. Let's get into it. CNRL is Canada's largest oil and gas producer and one of the world's largest independent energy companies by reserves. Its portfolio includes a mix of conventional crude, natural gas, natural gas liquids, in situ oil sands and mining operations. But what truly sets CNRL apart is scale. The company is expected to produce around 840,000 barrels per day of bitumen from its oil sands assets this year, coming from large, fully integrated facilities like Primrose, Kirby, Peace River, Horizon, and its interests in the Albion Sands mining complex. CNRL has built a reputation around operational discipline low decline rates, and long-life assets, features that make oil sands production uniquely stable. CNRL's new investment plan is anchored around four major expansions. Combined, these projects could add 340,000 barrels per day of new bitumen production capacity, all sold as heavy sour diluted bitumen. Jackfish Brownfield Expansion, 30,000 barrels per day. Capital cost, 650 to 750 million dollars. Timeline, five years. The Jackfish expansion adds 10,000 barrels per day to each of the three existing Jackfish SAG-D steam-assisted gravity drainage phases. This brownfield increment increases Jackfish's total capacity from 120,000 barrels per day to 150,000 barrels per day, with production phased in during the final three years of construction. Because the steam plants and central processing facilities already exist, this is a relatively low-risk, high-efficiency expansion with some of the fastest lead times. Pike 2 Greenfield Project, 70,000 barrels per day. Capital cost, $2.5 to $2.8 billion. Timeline, six years. Pike 2 is a brand new SAG-D facility located just south of Pike 1. The project has had a long regulatory history, originally submitted by Devon Energy in 2018 and acquired by CNRL after its 2019 purchase of Devon's thermal portfolio. The remaining 50% of the Pike leases were bought from BP in 2022. Regulatory review paused in 2021 but resumed in 2023, and CNRL expects final approval by year end. Once built, Pike 2 will produce 70,000 barrels per day with early Pike 1 volumes processed at the nearby Jackfish 3 Central Processing Facility. Jack Pine Mine Expansion, 150,000 barrels per day. Capital cost, $7.5 to $9 billion. Timeline, six years. This is the largest single component of CNRL's plan. The Jack Pine Expansion, part of the Albion Sands Mining Complex, already has regulatory approval dating back to 2013, from when Shell operated the site. The project requires a new extraction plant and froth treatment facility. Currently, Albion operations produce around 328,000 barrels per day, with output upgraded at the Scottford Upgrader. But the Jack Pine expansion will not be upgraded, 
Instead, production will be diluted and sold directly to market as heavy sour crew. Horizon North Mine Expansion, 90,000 barrels per day. Capital cost, 4.5 to $5.5 billion. Timeline, seven years. CNRL is now consolidating its previous plans for an in-pit extraction plant and a high-temperature paraffinic froth treatment unit into a single expansion, the Horizon North Mine. This requires new regulatory submissions and is considered a long-term growth pillar. Once complete, the Horizon complex could surpass 380,000 barrels per day, maintaining CNRL status as one of the largest single-site oil producers in the world. Some observers were recently disappointed that Mark Carney did not announce a new Northern Gateway 2.0 at his recent announcement of Canada's next major projects. However, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith, as well as industry insiders, were notably calm, indicating that negotiations are progressing quietly behind the scenes. The emerging grand bargain between Alberta and the Federal Liberal Party, which I explore fully in my Northern Gateway 2.0 video, appears to be focused on a trade-off involving emissions policy, indigenous partnership structures, and long-term market access. The lack of a public announcement is not necessarily a setback, it may simply mean the discussions are too nuanced to rush. A key reason the negotiations continue smoothly is that the major oil sands producers, especially CNRL, are directly involved through the Pathways Alliance, which is Canada's largest carbon capture initiative. CNRL is one of the dominant investors in the proposed $16-plus billion carbon capture and storage network, which includes a massive CO2 trunk line and multiple capture hubs designed to significantly reduce oil sands emissions. Because carbon capture is expected to be the centerpiece of any national emission strategy, CNRL is not just an observer. It is one of the main architects of the solution Ottawa wants. That makes CNRL a natural participant in the behind-the-scenes discussions that Danielle Smith and Mark Carney are steering. In other words, carbon capture isn't separate from the grand bargain. It is the bargaining chip. CNRL's willingness to build the infrastructure Ottawa needs gives Alberta leverage on market access and gives Ottawa a credible path to emissions reductions without production caps or shutdowns. Adding fuel to the speculation, the recently released federal budget included language strongly suggesting that the much-debated oil and gas emissions cap will not be implemented. Ottawa seems increasingly aware that shutting down future production growth would create political, economic, and fiscal backlash. Ottawa appears to be shifting toward pragmatism, especially as Canada faces deficits, competitiveness concerns. While political negotiations unfold, pipeline egress is improving dramatically without the need for drawn-out negotiations and construction. Enbridge recently made it official that its mainline optimization phase one will add 150,000 barrels per day of new capacity to the system. The company also indicated that it can unlock additional incremental volumes through further optimization work. At the same time, Trans Mountain has confirmed that it too can increase throughput through targeted debottlenecking efforts. Together, these enhancements point to a significant system-wide increase in export capacity without the need for any new long-distance pipelines. Taken together, Canada's egress pipelines could add up to 700,000 barrels per day of new export capacity, essentially the equivalent of building an entirely new pipeline but without the political firestorm. This is crucial. CNRL's 340,000 barrel per day expansion fits comfortably within these incremental gains. Canada has room to grow its oil sands production until about 2030 on its existing network, 2030 being approximately when a new pipeline would come online if a grand bargain were to be struck. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to this channel, Hum of the Earth Canada, 
for more relevant videos about Canada and its future. Also, this is a new channel, so subscribing helps a lot. You can also share your feedback and thoughts in the comments section. And if you're interested in cool places around the world, you can check out my other channel, Hum of the Earth. All right, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, have a great one.